is when we create our table of values for this class, I just want you to create a table of values that are between the points of negative 3, less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to positive 3. OK? What's between negative 3 and 3? What? Yes, between negative 3 and 3. Yes. So to create a table of values, all we're simply going to do is we're going to have x coordinates and we're going to have y coordinates. And as my constraint states, as my constraint states, I want values of x between negative 3 and 3. So I'm going to go negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. All right? Now, for the first couple I'll do, and then I'll start doing them, and not in my head, but I'll kind of talk them out loud. So to find the y values, so we give in our x values. These are what we call our arbitrary x values. To find the y values, all we're simply going to do is take our equation and plug in our value for x, or plug in our value in for x. Now, we haven't talked too much about absolute value functions. So just remember, absolute value represents the absolute distance. So it's always going to be positive. So I have negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. So that equals the absolute value of negative 2 minus 2. Well, the absolute value of negative 2 is going to be positive 2. Minus 2 equals, um, equals 0. Then I'll do the next one. Negative 2 plus 1, absolute value minus 2. Negative 2 plus 1 is going to equal to neg absolute value of negative 1. Minus 2, absolute value of negative 1 is 1. Minus 2 is going to equal negative 1. Is everybody following me so far? OK, so now I'm just going to kind of do these in my head to finish the rest of the problem. Uh, negative 1, so I plug in negative 1 in for x. Negative 1 plus 1 is 0. Absolute value of 0 is 0. Minus 2 is negative 2. If I plug in 0, 0 plus 1 is 1. Absolute value of 1 is 1. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. Uh, if I plug in 1, 1 plus 1 is 2. Absolute value of 2 is 2. 2 minus 2 is 0. And hopefully you guys kind of see there's a little bit of a pattern here. They're kind of the same on both sides of that 2, right? Uh, so let's do 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. Absolute value of 3 is 3. 3 minus 2 is 1. And 3. 3 plus 1 is 4. Absolute value of 4 is 4. 4 minus 2 is 2. All right? So. For one of the stations, that's exactly what you guys are going to do. For the other station, you're now going to take your coordinate points that you determined from your table, and you're going to graph them. So let's figure out. Um, So by doing these, I go ahead and graph them. Now, don't worry, guys, because for some of you that have been slacking so far, here comes the important thing that you really need to make sure you understand, because the last thing we're going to do is also talk about domain and range. Yes. So um, if you felt confident plotting points, let's go through domain and range, because I will expect you to know how to do domain and range. So ladies and gentlemen, we graph this equation. All right. Now. Um, when determining the domain and range for this function, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to just tell you what the domain and range for this one is, and then I'll actually do a different example um, for you for this. So the domain for this function is going to be from negative infinity to infinity, because the graph keeps on going to the left, keeps on going to the right. That's the set of all x values. There's no restriction. All x values are going to be covered within the domain. However, the range um, only goes as far down in the y value as negative 2 to infinity. Okay. I will do a better explanation here next. I just didn't want to, I just wanted to kind of finish 